What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm here today to give you a review of the Kith and Asics Gel Cayano 14 in the Scarab and Antler colorways. So these two Gel Cayano 14s are Kith exclusive colorways, not true collaborations, which dropped earlier this month on June 23rd. So I managed to grab both of these colorways through early access on the Kith app and they retailed for a price of 160 US dollars each or $220 here in Canada. The official colorways for this shoe is Cream and Antler and Cream and Scarab, and these continue the hot trend and high popularity of ASIC's Gel Cano 14 silhouette. Throughout the past couple years, we've seen 2000s era running silhouettes become very popular for lifestyle and everyday use, and the Gel Cano 14 is no exception. And to add to that fact, alongside these two colorways, Kith also released exclusive colorways, two to be exact, in the Gel 1130 silhouette also. So diving into the details of both of these shoes, the base layer of the sneaker is constructed out of an off-white or sail colored mesh. So this is an open style mesh with these large holes. And then surrounding the front toe cap, we have this tumbled synthetic leather in silver with this tonal detailing. So you can see for the antler colorway, this is like a dark muted pink almost. Whereas for the scarab colorway, in pictures it looks like black, but in real life, it's actually a really dark green. So the same synthetic leather covers the eyelets of the shoe, and we have this vertical line detailing featuring the same tonal colors of the respective shoes. Underneath this, we have more of that mesh that we saw on the toe box, and then overlaid on top of this, we have the signature ASIC stripes, which is once again constructed out of that synthetic leather. Towards the heel on the lateral side, we have gel Cayano 14 branding, and then visible on the top of the heel, we have this gel branding, which is once again done in that same tonal color. As far as the laces go in typical Kith fashion, they give us a ton of different lace options. So there's three laces for each shoe to be exact. So the standard default lace are these oval shaped laces in white, but they also give you these oval shaped laces in cream, along with a thick rope style lace, which matches the respective tonal color of each shoe. But for me, I like the simplicity and the clean look of the white laces, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. Underneath this, the tongue is entirely constructed out of that same open style mesh that we saw on the toe box. And on the top of the tongue, we have the synthetic leather overlay with ASICS branding in that tonal color. The interior of the shoe is padded and it's covered in this mesh liner. And then moving on to the insoles, these come with a very well padded Ortholite branded insole. So it's extremely cushioned. And you'll see the color of the insole matches the tonal color of the shoe. And press onto the heel, we have ASICS Gel Cayano 14 branding. So the upper of each of these shoes sits atop this well-padded EVA foam midsole, which is painted in white on the bottom and this vintage looking cream color on the top. In case within this midsole, we have gel technology, which is visible on both the forefoot of the lateral side, along with this larger gel unit on the lateral side of the heel as well. And because this was originally released as a running shoe, of course the gel technology was implemented to help with impact protection and shock absorption. Finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, so this outsole is constructed out of rubber in a mix of black and the shoe's tonal color rubber. So for the scarab pair, it's done in black and this dark green, whereas for the antler pair, you can see it's a mix of black and that pink sort of tone. We have these grooves to give you added flexibility, and in the middle of the outsole underneath the rubber, we have ASICS's Trustic technology, which is essentially a TPU shank plate which helps prevent the shoe from twisting, and it gives you added stability and midfoot support. So that breaks down the look and the construction of both of these shoes. And for those wondering about sizing, so my foot measures as a true size 10 slightly on the wider side. I got both of these in a size 10, which is true to size, and they fit me very nicely. If you have a really wide foot, or if you're someone that's in between sizes, you might want to consider rounding up to that higher size. But I feel like for the majority of people out there, sticking true to size should be absolutely fine. To give you guys a point of comparison, so I got both of these in a size 10. I also wear a size 10 in other shoes, for example, the New Balance 1906R and 2002R. And recent Gel Light 3s, I also stick true to size in them as well. Some people I know say these fit a little bit more snug. I didn't really find that was the case. There was about an index finger's width between the top of the shoe and the top of my toe, and I had no issues with the width of the shoe at all. Moving on to the comfort, so this silhouette is extremely comfortable. The one thing I noticed though is this shoe gives you a lot of support. So the heel you feel really locked in, and for those people that overpronate, or in other words roll their heel inwards when they walk, this is a great shoe that helps sort of mitigate or prevent that. So there's a lot of support in the heel without feeling overly clunky and hard, but at the same time with this EVA and gel cushioning technology, there's an adequate amount of cushioning underfoot as well. 
it's not gonna be an overly plush and mushy sort of shoe, but at the same time, you can still feel that squishiness underfoot. So I'd say that it's a pretty well-rounded shoe cushioning wise, but it leans a little bit more towards the supportive side. And the upper of the shoe, I have to say, feels extremely lightweight. With this mesh construction, it shaves off a lot of weight and it makes it extremely breathable too, which is great for summer. Finally, in terms of the quality and craftsmanship, so first off, material quality, because this is a running shoe from 2008, we can't really expect premium materials. So it's all synthetic on the upper. We have this open style mesh, synthetic leathers, which makes sense for a performance running shoe. But from a craftsmanship and build standpoint, I was a little bit disappointed in that there was quite a bit of noticeable glue stains around the midsole area. And there were some stains on the midsole on my antler pair specifically. So maybe I just got unlucky, but let me know in the comment section down below. How is the overall build and the craftsmanship on your pairs? So with all that out of the way now, let's toss both of these on feet, I'll lace them up, and I'll show you guys how they look. To be perfectly honest with you guys, I know the Gel Cayeno 14 and silhouettes like this have been pretty popular in the sneaker community for the past couple years. But call me a late adopter, I haven't really gotten into this whole trend, so I was curious to pick these up just to see what all the hype was about. Maybe it's because 2008 doesn't seem like it was that long ago. That's why I've kind of resisted hopping into this trend, but I can see at least from a comfort standpoint why these are so popular. And I suppose it's a great alternative for people that don't like the New Balance 2002R or 1906R or even the 860V2. This is a very solid ASICS alternative that sort of has a similar vibe and feel. And I know for those that struck out on this Scara pair specifically, I'm pretty sure there's a general release colorway that looks pretty similar to this pair, so I personally would avoid against paying resale for these, because at the end of the day, this is just a Kith exclusive colorway, and there's no actual Kith branding on either of these shoes whatsoever. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about this Kith A6 Gel Cayeno 14 in the Scarab and Antler colorways? Between the two, which of the two do you guys prefer? I think the Scarab pair is probably the easiest shoe to pull off. It essentially looks from a distance like white, cream, and black, whereas the Antler colorway, I think it's pretty underrated. I think this deep pink color complements the cream really, really well. So to me, it comes down to wearability and versatility versus having a bit more personality with the Antler colorway. So drop your comments down below, and as always, if you guys want to follow my Instagram, you can find me there at esco8, check out my Twitter account at sean.go, and visit my website at seangoca So thanks everyone for watching, hopefully you guys enjoy this review, and hopefully it helped you in some way, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.